Hello, how's it going? Welcome to Learning with Ray. In this video, we'll learn what cybersecurity is, its importance in the digital world, and the fundamentals of cybersecurity. To begin with, what is cybersecurity? Cybersecurity is a set of techniques used to protect the data integrity and the network integrity from unauthorized access and sabotage. Now, why get into cybersecurity in the first place? The answer is, with an increasing rate of cybercrime, there is an increase in demand to protect IT infrastructure. With each passing day, our lives are more and more intertwined with a digital world, and it is vital to reduce the disruptions and safeguard networks, data, and other IT infrastructure. Information security versus cybersecurity. Well, the processes and tools designed and used in the protection of safeguarding information is known as information security. Whereas cybersecurity is a set of techniques used to protect this integrity of network and data. Well, to put it simply, cybersecurity involves IT assets and it's more of a component or extension of the information security. Factors affecting cybersecurity. Primarily, there's two factors, the technological factors and the business plans. First, we'll cover the technological factors. Well, the first one is the platforms and tools used. And the second one, it's the network connectivity issues and all. Third one, it's the level of IT complexity, uh, the scale of technological operations. That's a important factor. And the emerging security tools, the cybersecurity tools out there. Like like what sort of uh, new updated firewalls are out there. And then we have operational support for security. It's not just that you purchase or uh, sub take the necessary security subscriptions and all, but you also have to make sure if there's enough support for the service you're using. And the second primary factor, it's the business plans. It's from an organizational perspective. The first one is the nature of business. Like what sort of business are you doing? Is it more prone to sabotage? You'll have to factor that in. And then the risk tolerance. How willing are you to take risk? Calculated risk, I mean. Do you have to go all out for a small firm? No, I don't think so. At least not on the level of a million dollar company. That's the point. I'm not saying don't invest in cybersecurity, just to be clear. And then the third factor, it's the industry trends. And the fourth one, it's the mergers, acquisitions and partnerships. Organization you're partnering with, is it prone to cybersecurity attacks? That's the point you have to consider. And then the last one, it's outsourcing and service providers. Let's say you do everything from securing the IT systems over there, but then the organization, they wants to get new hardware. And you'll have to make sure this hardware, is, it's not tampered with stuff like that. Like you have to make sure the outsourcing partner, the product you're getting from, or let's say if you're outsourcing work to a third party, then how active are the third party in uh, securing their IT infrastructure? So that's a factor as well. Moving on. Now we'll get to CIA triad. CIA triad, this is the foundation, the basis of security systems or policies. Well, basically there's three aspects to it. Confidentiality, integrity, and availability. When it comes to confidentiality, only authorized people can access info. Let's, let me give an example. How about payslips data? You only want HR department to access it, not anybody else. It's not like a, some a janitor working there could a, precisely know of what salaries others own. Like that's just an example. You'll have to keep the data secure. Integrity. Only authorized people can alter info. You have to make sure that data and networks have their integrity. You have to make sure that someone from marketing department cannot tamper with the accounts details. So you have to make sure that only authorized people can access, view this information or alter it so that the data has its integrity. And then the third one, it's availability. Info must be available on demand. Let's say you work in accounts and you wanted to look at the budget and stuff. You'll have to have an immediately look at it to figure out your next step. Availability is important. 
So the three things, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. That's the CIA triad and that's the basis of security systems and policies. Moving on, governance, risk, and compliance, GRC in short. A GRC framework helps an organization align its IT with business objectives and managing the risk meeting certain regulatory uh, compliance requirements. Let's say you are a credit card company. If you work at a credit card company, you have to ensure that the customer's financial data is well protected and not every script query is able to access it for starters. So there are certain regulations or rules set up either by government or other institutions that every organization in a country must adhere to. It's not the same in every country. European Union follows the GDPR. India, it has its own IT policy. And the United States, they have their own IT policy as well. But the thing is that there's certain rules you have to stick to. Moving on, now we'll cover the approaches to cybersecurity. There's three different approaches. First one is the compliance-based approach. The second is risk-based and ad hoc approach. First, we'll be covering the compliance-based approach. To put it simply, compliance-based approach means you have to follow the rules and regulations set by the government or regulatory institutions. You pretty much have to follow a rules checklist for the business organization to follow in order to be considered safe. To do their part to protect customers' personal information, you just have to follow the rules set up by the institutions or the government responsible for cybersecurity. And then there's this risk-based approach. It's more than following the rules. You play a more active part. Instead of uh, just meeting the basic requirements, here you'll actively list out all the possible threats that could affect your business. And then you'll actively do the necessary actions to reduce the risk. You, I'm repeating again, the organization actively lists all the threats it can face and prepares accordingly. It takes a more active approach. Moving on now, the ad hoc approach. The objective of ad hoc risk assessments is to understand the existing system and environment and identify the risk through analysis of the data collected. It's all about understanding the existing system and environment and identify the risks in this existing system and environment. You have to review the adequacy of existing security policies and procedures, analyze the assets, threats and vulnerabilities and the likelihood of the threats and then to map the, these threats, assets and vulnerabilities to identify their possible combination. Like each threat can be associated with a specific vulnerability or even multiple vulnerabilities. Unless a threat can exploit a vulnerability, it is not a risk to an asset. You have to develop a practical technical recommendations to address these vulnerabilities, like come up with a practical plan and tell how to address these uh, vulnerabilities. And you have to reduce the overall security risk. And then last, you have to produce a risk assessment report and submit it. Moving on, there are certain key terms you'll have to know. These are the cybersecurity key terms. The first one is vulnerability. Vulnerability refers to a flaw in the system. It's a flaw that can be taken advantage of. Attackers take advantage of this uh, flaw. Vulnerabilities leave the system network to attack. As a cybersecurity expert, what you have to do is reduce the attack surface. And that means reducing the vulnerabilities. So the less number of vulnerabilities, then the attacker finds it more difficult to hack into the system or network. Moving on. Threat. What is a threat? Threat is something that can lead to an attack. Threats are something that may or may not happen, but they have to potential to cause serious damage. Threats are something you have to actively watch out for. Like uh, they are the ones that might cause attacks. And then there's a threat agent. Threat agent is used to indicate an individual or a group that can manifest a threat. Um, just an example, if you were to look at hacktivist groups, if you are a company like a, that goes against their values, 
then it's fair to assume that target your organization and here the group that's the threat agent and now there's this risk risk can be explained best explained as the potential of damage being caused to an asset assets mean something worth protecting basically the network and it infrastructure and then there's this countermeasure now what is the term countermeasure mean it's an action device it's an action or procedure or technique device to reduce a threat vulnerability and risk asset it's something worth protecting this includes objects individuals reputations and finances like the point of uh, making sure that uh, you are well defended against an attack is to protect the assets it could be data network a certain individual like uh, you do know about cyberbullying and all right so individuals do count and then the reputations and finances now what's an inherent risk the amount of risk an organization is prone to without any safeguards let's say a company doesn't follow any of the cyber security rules then how prone is it to an attack that's the inherent risk and then there's the residual risk it's the amount of risk an organization is prone to after placing all the safeguards this is the risk caused by uncertainty even if you take all the measures you aren't 100 percent safe and that's the residual risk cause someone some hacker might come up with a new technique and cause havoc and you can't say that just because i follow the rules for now just because i took certain extra steps that doesn't mean you are 100 percent secure and now uh, we'll be covering the apt advanced persistent threat an advanced persistent threat is a broad term used to describe an attack campaign in which an intruder or a team of intruders establishes an illicit long-term presence on a network in order to mine highly sensitive data the targets of these assaults which are very well carefully chosen and research typically include large enterprises or governmental networks an example of this would be state-sponsored attacks you know how these days governments are facing cyber warfare against each other they come up as an example for apts advanced persistent threats all right uh, that's the end of the cyber security fundamentals thanks for watching